Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number 12 from the October, November 2021 International GCSE Cambridge Paper 2, um, Variant 2, Paper 2 2. And this question is about sequences. It says the table shows the first five terms of sequences A, B, and C. And complete the table to show the nth term of each sequence. Okay, so if you look at the first sequence here, you got going from 8 to 3 to minus 2 to minus 7 to minus 12. Every time you're going down by 5 units. Every time you have to go down by 5 units. Now, as you're going down by 5 units, a constant each time, it's got something to do with the minus 5 times table. So I'll write minus 5 times n. You don't say n minus 5, no. You say minus 5 times n. When you do n minus 5, all it means is it's going up by 1 each time, but you're starting from minus 4. That's what it means. If it's going up or down by a certain number, that's the number you multiply with n. That's the multiple of n. If it's going up by 5, I'd say 5n. If it's going up by 3, I'd say 3n. If it's going down by 5, I'd say minus 5n. That will make the sequence go down by 5 each term. However, I want it to start from 8. This is going to start from negative 5. If I put n equals 1 in here, I'm going to have negative 5. So I want it to start from 8. So how do I go from negative 5 up to 8? Well, I have to add 13. To go from minus 5 to 0, that's 5. And then from 0 to 8, that's 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. So I've got to do minus 5n plus 13. You can write it as 13 minus 5n if you want. It's the same thing. And if you want to check to see if your answer is correct, you can, for example, choose a term. Let's choose the fourth term. When n equals 4, you're going to have minus 5 times 4, which is negative 20, plus 13. Minus 20 plus 13 is negative 7. We know we're correct. So this is the nth term for sequence A. Now, for sequence B, we have 2, 3 over 2, 4 over 3, 5 over 4, 6 over 5. Now, what we'll notice here, 2 is actually the same. I'm going to write that as a fraction, as 2 over 1. And we can see that there's some sort of a link here. There's some sort of a link here. 2 over 1, 3 over 2, 4 over 3, 5 over 4, 6 over 5. So the first term is, you can see on the numerator, you start off with 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6. So every time the numerator is going up by 1. So it's going to have something like n, 1 times n. Okay, it's going up by 1, so it'll be 1 times n. But it starts from 2, so we have to add 1 to it. So that's going to give us what we need for the numerator. I'll we'll have n plus 1. Okay, so when n is 1, you're going to get 2. When n is 2, you're going to get 3. When n is 3, you're going to get 4, and so on. And the denominator starts from 1, and then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. So that's basically just n. So it's n plus 1 over n. Okay, because this starts from 1, it goes up by 1s. So it's going to be 1 times n, and we want it to start from 1, so that's fine. So n plus 1 over n is the sequence here. So you can just take the numerator and the denominator completely separately and get your answer for that. And then for sequence C, you've got a half, then 1, then 2, then 4, then 8. Now what you notice here, we have to multiply every time by the same number. If I multiply half by 2, I get 1. If I multiply 1 by 2, I get 2. 2 by 2, I get 4. 4 times 2, I get six, 8, and so on. So this is the type of sequence where you multiply by the same number each time. So that particular type of sequence, what you have to do is, you have to write 2 to the power of n. It's going to be something to do with 2 to the power of n. The number that you're multiplying is going to be the base. That will be the base. It's an exponential sequence. So the n, that's what we have to figure out. What is the n going to be? what type of n is going to be. If I leave it as 2 to the power of n, that's not going to give me my answer because when I put n equals 1, I want to have 2. Okay? I want to have a half, but I don't have a half. I, have, I, I don't have a half. I have 2 if I put n equals 1. All right? So let's see, what, well, let's see how we can deal with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write each of these numbers as 2 to the power of something. So this is 2 to the power of minus 1. This is 2 to the power of 0. This is 2 to the power of 1. This is 2 to the power of 2, and this is 2 to the power of 3. So if I think about it, the first term is 2 to the power of minus 1. The second term is 2 to the power of 0. The third term is 2 to the power of 1. 
the fourth term is 2 to the power of 2, the fifth term is 2 to the power of 3. Each time the term that I'm looking for, it's 2 less than the actual particular term. The power that I'm looking for is 2 less than the term. So if I put 2 to the power of n minus 2, that will give you my answer. This is 2 to the power of n minus 2. Why? Because, like for example, the fourth term is 2 squared. So if, if put n equals 4, I have to get 2 squared. That's going to be, give me the right answer. You see the difference between the term and the power is, you've got to go down by 2 to give you that power. Okay, so how do we work that out? First of all, we, we, we worked out that you have to multiply by 2 each time to get to the next term. That means it's going to have something to do with 2 to the power of something. 2 to the power of n somehow. Something with the n. Then you say to yourself, okay, the first term, if n equals 1, I want it to be a half, which is 2 to the power of minus 1. Once you worked out as 2 to the power of something, express each of these as 2 to the power of what it is. So a half is 2 to the power of minus 1, 1 is 2 to the power of 0, and so on. And then you compare that particular power that you have here with the term that is in, the position that is in. So that's the, when n equals 1, you're going to have a minus 1. When n equals 2, you're going to have a 0. When n equals 3, you're going to have a 1. Every time you see there's a link, the n has to go down by 2 for you to give you the right power. So it's 2 to the power of n minus 2. There's also other ways of doing this. For example, memorizing this formula, a to the times r to the power of n minus 1. If you memorize that, that's a formula for a sequence, uh, an exponential or geometric sequence, as they say, which this is. Then you can say a is the first term, which is a half. r is a common ratio, which is the number you have to multiply by each time, which is 2. And so you can say that the, the, the nth term is going to be given by a half times 2 to the power of n minus 1, which is the same as this, actually. All right. Um, you say, how is that the same as this? I mean, if you wrote this as your answer, it would still be correct. Why? Because this is like 2 to the power of minus 1 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. So here what we can do is add the powers. Okay. Um, this is, if you add the powers, you're going to have 2 to the power of minus 1 plus n minus 1 which is 2 to the power of n minus 2. It's the same thing. So this is like a, a kind of a logical way of getting the answer, and this is a way of getting the answer just by memorizing this formula. Both of them will give you the full marks, although I prefer for IG level for people to understand what's going on rather than just memorizing like parrots. So, you know, these two both are the same. You know, this is the same as that, as I've just shown you by the laws of indices. So this is the answer, and this is also the answer for this question. Okay, then, that's for question... 12 okay i'll answer question 13 in the next video um thank you for watching um other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist over here other questions about sequences and series can be found in this um, playlist over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon